our in-game operations did a great job of really keeping us posted throughout the day and then obviously the course throughout the spring game of really letting us know what was going on. I really like to thank our fans. This fan base is amazing. We had 35,000 people despite uh, the weather conditions. Uh, autograph session, we had families waiting in line since 5.30 this morning. So I'd like to, to say thank you to them. I thought we came out, I liked the way we competed going into a spring game. You always want a clean game. You don't want to be marred by turnovers and penalties. Uh, so I thought that part of it, of playing a clean game, was great. The thing that's invaluable that you really can't coach until you get into to a game conditions is really the in-game management of the substitutions. Uh, so it was, it was great not only for our players, but for our coaching staff as well. So those are things that I thought our players did a great job of really handling substitution again. I, I thought it was a, a very clean spring game. I think this football team's taken major steps, uh, one through 15, uh, but we have a lot of work to do. And again, it starts getting back into the weight room and continuing to get bigger and stronger, uh, continue to build our team chemistry and just our overall fundamentals and details. Uh, we held 20 players out today. Some were precautionary reasons, uh, some were post-surgical reasons. And then the other thing, it was great to have all of our Ball for Life's back. Uh, all eras represented, and that was great. And I think that was great for Tennessee to, to have our former players coming out and showing up like they have been. So I thought it was a great day. Unfortunately, cut short, but I liked the way our players competed. So I don't see any questions. We'll start with Jimmy Hines, Mark Packer, Steve Gordon. Coach, would you talk about the progress the quarterbacks made from day one yeah. to today? Well, they have made tremendous progress, Jimmy. And, and we talked about all spring long, don't compare, just compete. And I think a lot of times younger players have the the tendency to, to look over their shoulders and, and really focus on what the other individual is doing instead of themselves. And I thought they competed all spring. I thought that was evident today. And uh, the quarterback challenge, and it's, it, that's, that's a measuring stick. That's a measuring tool for us to see how they respond when they go out there. You know, it's all eyes on them. There's not 10 other players on the football field, so you're able to see in their eyes the look of competition. Do they enjoy that? But I've been pleased with the quarterback position all spring and obviously now going into the summer months uh, the next evolution of team 121 is we have to do a good job of continuing to grow and build on momentum but most progress occurs in the summer months in terms of leadership and getting still to the details accountability and toughness which we talk about every day which how do you, how do you handle a time frame of naming a starter at, at that position yeah there's there's no time frame i don't ever believe that you give yourself a set time when you have to name a starting quarterback. I want them to compete. I think competition is extremely healthy. and I think they've all elevated their games because of that competition. So I want them to compete. And we have no timetable. I was really pleased with the way they performed today. I thought our receivers caught the football very well. I thought we, you know, from a catch and advance standpoint. Uh, but again, there's no timetable. Steve, can you talk about the award winners a little bit that you've handed out today? Yeah, I tell you, that it was a difficult, probably the most difficult spring we've had, and we let the players decide on most of them. Uh, but I think, you know, it starts off with your unsung heroes, your walk-ons who bring it every day. And we had a number of individuals, we call it 15 strong, that made it through all 15 practices. And you look at the momentum that Quay uh, started right from um, when Coach Rock got here in the weight room. Uh, that, that process started in January, and pound per pound, he's one of the strongest players we have on our football team. We wanted to see could that translate onto the football field, and, and we saw that translation start to occur. So that was good. Uh, you know, when you look at the leadership awards, John Kelly, uh, he's one of those individuals who, who brings it every day. Daryl Taylor uh, is another individual who's really growing into a leadership role, and it gets back to if you remember when spring football started we talked about servant leadership and the definition of servant leadership is it is helping everyone get better with no agenda and i thought this football team was able to do that and then the 63 award mark quest callaway's done a great job and the most improved from Jakob johnson to justin martin justin martin has been uh, consistent in his performance 1 through 15 and he's been very driven every single day and it's been great to see from that defensive back position that the maturation of Justin. 
And Steve McGarvey and Joe Retro? You talked about the quarterback competition. It's going to be an ongoing thing through the summer. But where does it stand at this point? Does anybody have an edge heading out of this? No. Uh, you know, the great thing is every day you get an opportunity to better yourself. And again, I feel comfortable with all of our quarterbacks. I thought they progressed exceptionally well. And uh, they just need to continue to do that, continue to compete on a daily basis and not worry about anything else. Don't let clutter and distraction get in the way, and they'll be just fine. Joe and John Bryce, following up on that, does Normandy have an edge in terms of system grasp just because he's been here longer, he's seen some game action? And also, who, who actually won the quarterback competition? Quentin Normandy won it. Uh, but, uh, you know, Quentin has live game repetitions, and that's hard to simulate as we talk about. Game repetitions are invaluable. But also I think Jarrett has uh, done a great job of really being a student of the game. And I think all quarterbacks have benefited from Joshua Dobbs, uh, you know, in the, his approach every single day and what it means to be the quarterback at the University of Tennessee. We talk about it being a global position and the consistency of approach and not letting clutter and distraction get in the way. So I think they've all benefited from his presence. But uh, again, everyone may have, one person may be ahead of the other in one area and then the other one, the other one. But again, I sit up here today and I'm really, really pleased with that position. All right guys, we'll start some more. Uh, John Bryce, Brent Hubbs, Ryan Callahan. Butch, um, you said you want those guys to keep competing. How do they compete in the off season when they're, they're not the organized activities? And then part two, I guess, would be um, you head into this summer with an, a roster you entirely assembled. Does that make you think these guys know a little bit more what's expected and what to do, or how do you approach that? Well, first of all, how do they get better in the summer? Well, it's on them, and that's where the ownership kicks in. And, they'll run all of our throwing sessions. And to me, that's when you really find out. And, you know, a lot of times the players decide who the quarterback is by the way they rally around them. So it's a great opportunity for them from a leadership standpoint. We'll put a lot on their shoulders. Uh, it's player-led workouts. Uh, so again, to me, that's the exciting thing. And I think they have a great basis for that. So that'll be part of the evaluation tool. And then in terms of the roster, you know, the great thing is these players understand the standard and the expectations. And what I've been more pleased with this spring, one of the great things is the way they coached each other. And even the, the individuals that were held out of spring, the way they coached the young players. And we welcomed five high school seniors in here at mid-year. And they've done a really good job of really mentoring them and guiding them. So again, I've been pleased with the older players. Uh, we're going to have to rely on some younger players coming in at, at particular position groups. Uh, but again, I've liked the way their approach every single day, and, and that's what we talk about is just consistency and approach and you know, being the best version of you every single day, and, and I thought our players have been able to do that. All right, guys, we'll finish up with Brent, Ryan, and Grant. We have a bunch of players coming in. Butch, a year ago it was all about expectations. This year the narrative nationally is about what all this team has lost from a production standpoint. Do you like that for this team and their mentality from a motivational standpoint? Maybe a little bit more of those questions than you had a year ago? Well, I think the word or the adjective, however you want to determine what it is, is the word opportunity. Uh, it's a great opportunity for a lot of players that, uh, you know, maybe haven't had the opportunity in the past. And that's the great thing about college football is a 30-year roster turns over every single year. So within that turnover, it's new leadership opportunities, it's new roles. Some individuals were a role player in terms of special teams, and now their role is expanded. And that's what makes college football very, very special. Uh, then we're going to have to rely on some true freshmen as well. But this is a football team that works. Uh, you know, they're not considered about outside noises or what people think. They just come to work every single day. And again, we're going to need that mentality and we need that focus. Uh, obviously, we lose a lot of production, but, uh, you know, I'm proud of the seniors that have left the program and their lives are about to change here in another week. And uh, you look how far we've come. And, uh, you know, draft weekend is going to be very, very special at Tennessee.